Good evening from Washington. I'm Larry O'Connor and this town is still buzzing from President Trump's rollicking speech at CPAC on Saturday. And well, we're still buzzing about it. We're going to talk about it quite a bit. Let's start, though, with my perspective. There I was sitting there, I think, in the fourth row of the crowd at CPAC. I was there with Congressman Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, Mark Levin right in front of me, Seb Gorka, John Solomon. I felt like somebody. I wanted to be in the room so I could report directly to you what was said because I knew the media was going to ignore it. And I got to tell you, this was probably one of the most substantive policy speeches I've ever seen Donald Trump give, certainly in this election cycle. Hour and 45 minutes, more than half of it was about specific conservative agenda items that he promises to accomplish should you elect him president. And I know if you were watching the Sunday shows yesterday and cable news or if you read the newspaper, you didn't hear about it. So let's get right to it so you can hear about it. We'll begin with foreign policy and the Russia-Ukraine war. Watch. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, I will have the disastrous war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It will be settled quickly. quickly. I will get the problem solved and I will get it solved in rapid order, and it will take me no longer than one day. I know exactly what to say to How each can other. he say that? How can he do that? Trump can't do that in one day. Are you kidding me? Hey, remember when he actually convinced carrier air conditioners to abandon their plan to manufacture down in Mexico, and they kept their factory in Indiana. He did that in December after he had been elected before he was sworn in. Remember how the stock market jumped in those two months between November and January up like 20 percent just because Trump had won the election and he started uh, talking about what he was going to do in his first hundred days. Yeah, that was all done before he became president. Remember how Ronald Reagan helped free the Iranian hostages and he announced it on Inauguration Day? Of course, a president-elect can get a lot accomplished before they're actually sworn in. Okay, let's move to China. And I will implement a four-year plan to phase out all Chinese imports of essential goods and gain total independence from China. We have to do it. We have to do it. I will hold China financially accountable for unleashing the China virus upon the world. I don't know how a president actually over four years will completely roll back all of our imports from China, unless you're talking about a thousand percent tariff or something. Uh, but corporations do need to wean themselves from manufacturing in that prison state. They need to find other places to build their products. And I think we do need leadership to move us in that direction. By throwing it out there, he's basically laid down the marker. Every other candidate actually has to explain why that's not a good idea, why they do want us to be beholden to China, because how's that working out for us? And with regard to holding them financially accountable for the virus, I mean, again, why not? Why haven't we? Why has it taken two years for Congress to even have committee hearings? Because Nancy Pelosi didn't want to find out what the origins of the virus was. Why? Why are they so intent on protecting China? All right, let's move on to domestic policy. Next up. We will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources to carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Yeah, and this is going well beyond just domestic policy. Obviously, our border is a national security issue as well. And he should talk about the border and Biden's failed policy in every single speech. And he should talk uh, at length about it because this isn't some esoteric pipe dream now of what Trump might do if he's elected. In 2015 and 16, he was saying, build the wall. Well, you can't do that and we'll make Mexico pay for it. Well, you can't do that. And if anyone tries to get into the country, we'll have them remain in Mexico. You can't do that. And we'll have a travel ban from certain countries who are hostile to us. You can't do that. Well, he did all of that. And we know exactly what the policy was under Trump, and we know exactly now what the policy is under Biden. And nobody thinks things are working with Biden. This is something he owns, and he should own it even more. Okay, next. And I will move heaven and earth to fully and finally secure our elections. All Republican governors should immediately go for paper ballots, one-day voting, and voter ID. Paper ballots, one-day voting, voter ID. Paper ballots, one-day voting, voter ID. It's great. It's short. It's repeatable. It's a mantra. And it's smart. Uh, now, here's the thing. He says, I'll move heaven and earth to finally secure our elections. There's not a whole lot he can do. 
other than the fact that he just said, all Republican governors, see, he needs to make sure that the states do this. And it's true, every single Republican governor should model their elections off of what Florida has done. They've got it locked down and it's absolutely done right. And by the way, you should know he definitely said for people in the military or if you're legitimately sick, you can have an absentee ballot, but for the most part, it should be same day. All right, next. We will support baby boomers. And we will support baby bonuses for a new baby boom. How does that sound? That sounds pretty good. I want a baby boom. Oh, you men are so lucky out there. You're so lucky. <laughs> it was at that moment when my wife Meredith just lost it. If she had been drinking, she would have done a spit take. Uh, that's quintessential classic Trump, uh, the style, the humor. And oh, by the way, a very good policy. We do need to encourage more births in this country and forget about some child tax credit or something. I don't know, a bonus, you get money, cash money. That which is rewarded is repeated. And it's very good. And also, I just like the fact that he gave a wink and a nod to men, you lucky men. Give you a reason to make a baby. Okay, more. I will fight for parents' rights. Can you believe that here we are, and I'm saying I'm going to fight for parents' rights? Who would think that you have to ever say parents' rights? Don't you think parents have pretty good rights, right? Who would think that you have to actually say it? But you do, because they took the rights away. That's right. The Marxists have taken them away, and they want to take them away because they think they're not really your children. Uh, this is so smart of him. This resonates. We just saw this issue win in Virginia, of all places, where a Republican has not won in over eight years. And it transcends party lines. Every single adult in this country, logically, if they're thinking and they have any wisdom, also recognizes that, of course, parents should have the right to raise their children however they choose. But there are some political figures in this country who don't agree with that. And, well, he'll be running against them. All right, now watch this one. Best applause, Mom. I will revoke every Biden policy promoting the chemical castration and sexual mutilization of our youth and ask Congress to send me a bill prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. That should be easy. And we will keep men out of women's sports. Right? Right there. I think that was the loudest applause of the night. And uh, I want Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or Gavin Newsom or Pete Buttigieg, whoever ends up being the Democrat nominee, I want them to defend that. I want them to get up there and explain why men should compete in women's sports. Why are we on defensive on this thing? Why should we even have to be fighting back on this? They should have never been able to change these policies in the first place. But we're awake now. And we're pushing it forward. And that was a very smart move. All right. So that's everything you didn't see on the Sunday shows in cable news. Here's the only thing they did show you. Thank you, Thank you very much. And if you put me back in the White House, their reign is over. Their reign will be over. And they know it. And America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation right now. We don't have free press. We don't have free anything. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. I am your retribution. Look at him. He's a fascist. He's running for revenge. He's going to punish his foes. It's political rhetoric, guys. Calm down. And by the way, if you don't think Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Jerry Nadler and Adam Schiff and Joe Biden have trying to enforce retribution against their political enemies over the last two years, you haven't been paying attention. More to come on O'Connor Tonight.